Question number 10. Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Social Development and asks, does she agree with paediatrician Professor Innes Asher, who is calling on the government to, quote, lift incomes for those in paid work and those supported by the income support benefits? Unquote. Honourable Anne Tolley. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, and although the number of children living in hardship has dropped, this government is very focused on lifting the income of all New Zealanders. That's why our priorities are on growing the economy and getting people off welfare. According to the statistics New Zealand's HES, household incomes have risen 9%, and we also have 1,600 people going off welfare and into work every week. For low-income families, we're spending, for example, $2.5 billion a year on working for families, $4.4 billion on benefits, $1.9 billion a year on housing assistance. And we've maintained that support throughout the recession and the Canterbury earthquakes, when finances were extremely tight and other countries were introducing austerity measures. Plus, we're funding programs like breakfasts in all schools that want it, social workers in all low decile schools, and extra support for budgeting services. Yes, there are New Zealanders doing it tough. The government continues by making sure that the billions we already spend each year on supporting families is being spent in the most effective way. <laughs> Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question, Jan Logie. Is the Minister concerned that even with all of that beneficence, these children are still living in poverty because the basic benefit levels are set too low? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, I don't think there's a member in this House that isn't concerned uh, and want to see every New Zealand child live a full and successful life. But the premise that that um, member puts into their, into their question is incorrect. <laughs> Supplementary, Mr. Supplementary Mr. question, Jan Logie. Hmm. Does she accept it's not possible or even appropriate for all parents to be in paid work? For example, parents going through chemotherapy, parents caring for severely disabled children, or parents traumatised by violent relationships? Honourable Anne Tolley. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, that's correct, and our benefit system supports exactly those people uh, throughout those troubles. Supplementary. Mr. Supplementary Mr. question, Jan Logie. Why won't she set aside ideology and lift the incomes for parents who can't work? so that no New Zealand child has to live in poverty, which is what her current policy settings are subjecting them to. Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, I wish it was that easy, actually. The, the issues around poverty are complex and numerous and take a great deal of effort over a long period of time. And in the very best of times under the previous Labor government, those, poverty, those children living in poverty hardly moved at all. So to expect us through, after recovering from an economic recession, to work, work miracles in a short period of time, this government is determined to work to ensure that all New Zealanders can enjoy, all New Zealand children can enjoy a full life. Supplementary question, uh, Carmel Cipollone. Will she consider lifting the abatement rate from $100 to $150 as a way in which to lift incomes for those in paid work and supported by income support benefits? If not, why not? Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, this government is looking at a range of measures to address some of the issues that were raised, have been raised in the monitor released today and in the work that uh, this government has been doing. But you also have to be careful that you maintain the difference between people who are working, the advantage for people who are working. And that's why this government is focused so much on getting people back into work. 1,600 people a week leaving the benefit to get back into work has to be better for their families long term. Question number 11, Kanwal Singh Bakshi. 